uh, it's about time yeah uh, so good evening to all dear children parents teachers our uh, ceo mr subramanyam and our guest speaker for today ms shobha desika so today's uh, webinar children is on all about science projects because i have been giving you all a lot of projects in science but i don't find anybody coming out with anything very concrete of course there are a few projects which have come out beautifully but on a general level what are science projects how to do science projects how to write for science projects what are the types of projects you need to take up this you know there needs to be a lot of learning for all of you so therefore you know it's just like uh, you know there is something called you know the the whole idea of bringing in innovation into classrooms okay so there are there, there is no uh, dearth of ideas if i look at young children with a little spark they will come out with a whole lot of uh, you know experiments a whole lot of research and things like that which will be simply amazing you know children you must remember that your brain has no limitation at all the more you learn the more you read the more you you know start thinking on productive lines how can i and for all these children you need to look at everything with an eye to find a solution to a problem very simple ones supposing you find that yes your mother is daily you know uh finding it difficult to you know wash the vessels and other things then you need to say okay let me find a solution of giving my mother a hands free kind of a uh, scrub so that you know she doesn't have to mess up her hands so you know innovation is there for everything children and you need to think and find solutions for this okay so this is how various inventions and discoveries have come about like this only people finding you know uh, things out of nowhere so like say for example there are you know hundreds and thousands of people who would have seen you know an apple falling from a tree okay there was a uh, newton who saw it newton na shobha am i right yes ma'am newton <laughs> yes <laughs> there was a newton who saw that you know the 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 apple falling and then came out with the laws of gravity okay so it is nothing but nothing new something that is already existing but finding a solution to an already existing problem is very important and now for this we have a most wonderful and the true you know person who will fit into this kind of a webinar for you all children shobha ma'am Uh, is a treasure trove of knowledge believe me she ma'am and myself worked together for many years and she has always been very innovative and very creative in every little thing that she was doing you know in the school she would always look for something very creative you know nothing just run of the mill kind and uh, she ha- is a very eminent educationist she has been the principal of uh, Kairos Global School prior to that she was a vice principal at Meridian School and uh, in in prior to that she was a teacher but wherever she was she ensured that she brought in innovation in her work sphere okay and ma'am has got you know ma'am has got an eye for detail she looks at every little thing with a minute detail very minutely observing everything and she never jumps to a quick conclusion she looks at things very minutely and comes out with solutions for the same so that is our dear shobha ma'am and our resource mm-hmm. person for today she is a post graduate trained uh, teacher and uh, um, i without much chadu i would hand it over to shobha ma'am over to you shobha ma'am and i must thank you so much thank you ma'am. for taking thank you. this on thank you thank you so much uh, lalita ma'am and uh, 
uh, and to and greetings to the to Mr. Subramanian. And uh, welcome you all kids. I'm sure I don't want to waste much time, but that was a, a great, a wonderful introduction about me. But I know working with Lalita ma'am was something, she is like my guru, you know, the guru of guru. She is like, like my Sadhguru for uh, teaching. And that's how I learned and how I for detail. Now, why I want to tell this I for detail? Unless you have this I for detail, even the creativity aspect will not come out. And as ma'am said, necessity is the mother of invention. So when there is a necessity, you have to think and ponder on it and then see how I can offer a solution. See, when there is a problem, there will always be a solution. But only thing, we don't find the solution. We don't take time to look into the solution deeply. So unless we delve into the problem, we will not find the solution. So similarly, even in science, science is something we have everywhere around us, isn't it? Right from the moment we wake up, it's not even in sleep we are in science, even while we are, way, we are awake we are in science, but when we are doing anything we are in science, so there's nothing that there is no science anywhere, if somebody says no science is not the subject for me, then he is not existing, how is he not existing, it, can, it has to exist, so okay. So without much uh, uh, more introduction, I want to just set a note, uh, shall we all have a quiz? Shall we have all a quiz? So let's set it with a quiz. Okay, like, let me share the screen for the quiz. Just a minute, just give me a moment. Children, I have typed a link in the uh, chat box. Can you all click on the link in the chat box and you can start the quiz? Are you all in? Have you all clicked it? When you say yes, then I will start the quiz. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, yes Shobha, ma'am. You yes, are very yes. much audible. Yes. Are you all clicked? Yes. Now I'm going to start the quiz. Okay. It's a very simple quiz, but let me set the tone for science and then we can get on to the discussion. Let it be a more interactive session rather than a monologue, okay? Wonderful. Sai Sharan is still in the lead. Very good. Very good. Oh. 
Oh, followed by Samya. Very good. Good, good. Bunch. Very good. Wow, Sai Sharan is continuing to be in the lead. Very good, very good. A very simple quiz, but it just tingles your mind. That's good, that's good. Manasa is trailing, Vansh is also trailing. Wow, Rohan has come to the top, so very good. Soumya is leading. Very good. Tejas when he has come from Norway. Very good. Very good. Bunch. Sai Charan, continue answering. Yes. Yeah, now I'm going to end the quiz. Wow, Tejas Vini, very good, very good. Okay. Yeah, so Rohan, Tejas Vini, Rohan and Vansh are in the lead. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. That's really wonderful. And I'm sure all of you must have enjoyed it. Um, sorry. Yes, so did you all enjoy the quiz? How did you all enjoy the quiz? Let me see who is there. Tejaswini, uh, can you turn on your cameras? Let me see the winners, the first three winners. Tejaswini, can you turn on your cameras? Tejaswini, Bunch, and uh, uh, what was the third person? Uh, uh, Saumya, Saumya. Yeah, very good. Excellent. So this has set the tone for uh, uh, the session today. So I don't want this to be a very monologue session. I want it to be interactive. Uh, if you have any questions, instead of interrupting in between, so let me tell the ground rules. Uh, instead of interrupting in between the session, you please write down your questions. And towards the end of the session, I have a question and answer session, okay? 
So let me start off and let me share my screen now. I see all of you are waiting. Let me quickly. Uh, Madhavi, is my screen visible? Yes, Shubha, ma'am. It's yes. visible. Okay. Yes. Ma'am, go to the presentation. Yes. 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 So, good afternoon. Good evening, children. And uh, let me just get delve into the topic. Uh, today's topic is how should you present your science project? So before getting into the how to present it, let's know what, as, um, I mean, uh, Albert Einstein has said, the important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. And how will you arouse curiosity in yourself? Curiosity can be done only through the why, what, when, and all the four whys plus the how over there. So all these four Ys, four Ws and one H, okay? So those are the essential factors for curiosity, isn't it? So I would say, what is science? So can I term science as knowledge and a process? It's exciting, useful, ongoing, and is it a global human endeavor? So when I say it is a, a knowledge and process, what do you actually have in that knowledge and process? In school, sometimes, do you think it is only a collection of textbooks or do you think it is a, just a small story or it is something that is a process of discovery that went to uh, giving isolated facts into coherent and comprehensive understanding. So there are so many things that are there in the knowledge and the process aspect. When you say it is exciting, isn't it exciting? So every day, right from the moment we get up till we go to bed, Everything in inward, I always said, is exciting and there is a science aspect to it. Isn't so science is a way of discovering what's there in the universe and how those were things work today. Okay, some things have been already discovered or invented and we are looking into it and how it works. That is the curiosity we have. How it worked in the past and how it is working now. Isn't it? We have seen a lot of, like if you buy, you see the cars those days, Wherever a different kind, but today you see everything, Internet of Things, there are so many things that have come up, that have come up in every field, right from that, uh, how we, uh, even you have a, a motorized brush also, did you ever think about it? People in those days were using a neem, neem, uh, neem twigs for uh, toothbrushes. So that is the kind of evolution we have taken it for. So it is definitely exciting. Isn't it? Science is ongoing. There is nothing, there is no, there is no way telling that today science is over. Yes, I, I am done and done, done with it. No, it cannot be told like that. So science is continually defining and expanding our knowledge of the universe. It leads to new questions. It gives us for future investigations. And you can never say it is finished. Isn't it? And it is also a uh, uh, it's like it's a global human endeavor. What do I mean by these big words like global human endeavor? People all over the world participate in some form or the other in the process of science and you can also do it, isn't it? So when I say this one, so what does it mean actually? When I say what are the steps, scientific methods, there is something called scientific methods and everything, okay? So when I say method, there, when you say method, that there, there is something called observation. First, you have to observe. Observation is very important in science. Okay, so first you need to observe. Then frame a question. Okay, why, why is it like this? When did this happen? How is this going to work? The four W's and the one H. So everything you have to keep questioning yourself. So first is observation, then the questioning. Then what the hypothesis? Hypothesis, don't get worried about the big, big terms like this. Hypothesis is nothing but it's like a theory or it is, okay, if I change like this, what will happen? 
if I do like this one, so if and when, or cause and effect, we can say. So if this happens like this, then what will happen? So these are called as the if and then, or cause and effect, we call it as. And then you actually explain. So when you are thinking, okay, if this is done like this, how can I proceed further? So you have to do some experimenting over there. So you take it to the next step of doing a small, you, you do trial and error. This is the place where you do trial and error. If this was like this, okay, if I increase the length of the string in the pendulum, how is the swing going to be? So do it. So unless you do it, you will not know. And then you will analyze, okay, if this many centimeters, if I increase the length of the string in the pendulum, then what is it going to happen? So you document all those, you record all those, and you keep comparing. Analysis is nothing but comparing the data which you have. And then finally, you will conclude, okay, based on this, if, if I had done like this, this was what was the result. And if it, this was done that way, this would be the result. So this is called as a scientific method. Observation, questioning, hypothesis, experiment, analysis, and conclusion. So this is how you proceed. So when you say there are, well, there are steps in the uh, scientific method, suppose I say, and I told you observation. Now you're seeing a plant growing, okay? So when you're telling the plant is growing, you feel that the plant is not so healthy. It is not growing so well. Then what do you do? You say, okay, let me change the manure or let me give a better manure to the plant. How can I do it? So your first observation was, you had observed the plant and you found that the plant was not growing properly as per your desire. Then, then you will think what type of fertilizer will work the best. So that was your question over there, isn't it? And then when I said the theory, plants grow, suppose I have three types of fertilizers, A, B, and C. Okay, A is something has uh, all kinds of uh, different kinds of chemicals in it and it is one type of fertilizer. Uh, bad beef, I say it is all purely organic and uh, has not, uh, may give a better yield. So let me try that. And the third one will be just an uh, ordinary one. Okay, it's sold in the market. Let me know. So you had three types of bags, A, B, and C. So that was your, after the questioning, you wanted to use something of these and then further go the start experimenting on it. So when you started experimenting, then you saw the results of the um, experiment. What did you do in that? You first did a lot of trial and error, isn't it? You, you, you would have had three parts of the same plant and you would have given the uh, fertilizers in all the three plants according to the A, B, and C. And then finally what happened? You would have seen the result. Then the which hypothesis of which which I thought will be the right, that would be your conclusion. So the hypothesis says that bad A, probably that was my organic uh, uh, manure and it had all good uh, goodness for the plant. So, but this all depends on the other factors also. So they are called as variables, which I will tell in the further slides. So this is how the steps in the scientific method are taken. Observation, question, hypothesis, Results and conclusion. Okay. Now, so I just want to take it a little further. When I say the core of science, you know, you gather all the data. You have observed something. Your observation is done. Then you have gathered the data. So you have to test all your uh, data which you have. So where there I go, the core of science, when I say it is hypothesis, the expected results. Suppose, did you really expect this? You may have thought maybe bag B, if I had chosen it, it would have been better. But bag A turned out to be better, isn't it? So you have the hypothesis, the expected results and observation. And then what is the actual result which you expected? So was it to be? So here I say, what if? What if I use this bag B and suppose I want to change some uh, aspect of the fertilizer which I had in bag B. Maybe this plant didn't, uh, would have grown better. So if this happens, then what will happen? So, and finally, what you will do, you will come to your conclusion. That is the actual observation which you're seeing or the actual result. You're seeing the plant and the experiment which you have done, isn't it? Now, I always want to take an example of here. Okay, so the logic of the argument it is. 
So when I say hypothesis or so, now I, my idea here is or my observation or idea, anything you can, it can be. So uh, my idea is life is built from cell sensing. So how can I say that life is built from cells? Then I will say, we first have to observe the cell. When, when you say life cell means when you, you say cell, cell is a living uh, part of the body, you will say. Only when cells are living, we are living out, isn't it? So we expect cells, so we observe the cells under the microscope. So actual observation, what will you do? Like this is the expected one. So actual observation is what we actually observe the cells under the microscope. Then how is the argument actually assembled? That means how am I going to gather all this data and put it in a proper way that people can understand, that I can understand, and how do I have to present it? So then what we do, the easiest way for us is we take a leaf and we observe it under the microscope, isn't it? And then what we see, which leads to the idea that life is built from cells. So my idea was, was the first, is life from the cells. So with all that, I have seen that when I see under the microscope, you see that there are cells in the leaf. So then what do we expect when we see the cells, then we conclude that yes, life is from cells. Isn't it? Life is always from cells. Now, let me uh, to take it a little further. What will I do is, uh, so I want to introduce the concept of uh, independent variables and dependent variables. So I thought I can use one small experiment over. You have the seeds of a tomato and you have the seeds of the pumpkin over here. What happens, seeds of tomatoes are, how are they? They are small, isn't it? And when you see the seeds of the, just a minute. When you see the seeds of the uh, tomato, they are very small. When you see the seeds of the pumpkin, they are really bigger than the tomato seeds. So what is the, uh, what is the factor? Now, what are we seeing into this one? Which type of seeds will germinate faster? So that is my first question over there, okay? My idea or my observation. Now, I have two types of seeds in my hands. I want to just, which is the, uh, which one germinates faster? So for that, the size of the seed, see, anyway, germination is going to happen. So when I say the size is an independent variable, we'll say, okay, when you go to a smaller class children, don't get worried about the word variable. When you go to higher classes, you will learn what the word variable means. That means it keeps varying, sorry. Okay, so you see the size is independent of the size. So size is an independent variable. Then what are the other independent variables? What all you require for a seed to germinate? you will require water, lights, and the soil composition, isn't it? So these are the independent variables which we are looking, in, looking into it for the germination of the seed. Then when you add germination is a dependent variable. Why is it dependent? Because it's dependent on the size. So when you alter the size, naturally. So what will happen over here? Uh, can anybody, I mean, I, I suggest you put something in the chat box here. I would like to give a little interaction. This seed will germinate faster, whether the tomato seeds, you can unmute yourself and answer. Which seeds will germinate faster, the pumpkin or the tomato? Which will germinate faster? You can unmute yourself and to answer, children. Ma'am, they are all hard muted, so they can oh, put okay, it in the okay. chat group. Uh, okay, let uh, yeah, please uh, uh, okay. type in the chat. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, you can type in the chat box, children. Which will germinate faster, the tomato seeds or the pumpkin seeds? You type in the chat box, uh, Ankit. Tomato. Okay, very good. Anybody else? I find only one answer over here. Tell the question again. Which seed will germinate faster? Whether the tomato seeds or, or which will take more time to germinate? Let me reframe the question. Which will take more time to germinate? Is this a tomato or the pumpkin? Ma'am, I think pumpkin will take more time to germinate. Okay. 
Anybody else? Okay, I got three answers. That's fantastic. Okay, so now let us see what is it. So the germination time, the larger seeds, very good. Somebody said pumpkin will take germination time for a larger seeds will take more time and germination time for smaller seeds will take less time. Why will it take less time? Tomato seeds will germinate much faster. Why? We should also know. See, when we have observed, when we have the idea, everything is there. I told you the four W's and one H. You have to also know why. Why is it happening? So small seeds, if you see, the thickness of the seed coat is thin. And water permeability, that means how much of water enters inside the small seed, it's tiny, tiny, you know. So it will enter very less. So it will enter faster order. So greater water permeability. And then lesser uh, water absorption. And then finally, what do you see? You will see the surface volume ratio. Because the seeds are so tiny, isn't it? The surface area is also less. The older kids can relate it to your surface area and volume, what you learned in mathematics. See, this is one interdisciplinary. You can also uh, you can link it to your mathematics over here. Water pure permeability, you can link it little to your social science over here. Thickness of the seed coat, that is also thin. So there also you can relate mathematics. See how many in one small seed is teaching us so many things, isn't it? That small seed of water absorption, water permeability, thickness of the seed coat and surface volume ratio. Because the surface area is less, it takes a lesser time to uh, germinate and germinates much faster because pumping is pumping seeds. If you see, the size of the seed is big. So that's why we say that it takes a longer time to germinate. Okay, very good. Now, I would just like to show, now we have seen something in the biology aspect, okay? I want you to just, see, this is not, if you can take it further as an experiment, I've shared this uh, PPT with uh, Ladita ma'am, but if you want to do this experiment, this is a very wonderful experiment where you have the hand and how the um, metacarpals, carpals, phalanges are all connected. It's a lovely experiment. It's a very simple one, which you can just do with straws and paper. I'll just show you the steps, okay? So uh, this is the hand movement. First, you cut out the thing and get the hand, get the straws. All the instructions are given in it, okay? All the instructions are given. And uh, this is how it is going. So there are the strings. The instructions are given very clearly. And finally, what happens when he's pulling them? And I see here, See, he's pulling the string over here. So what happens? Holding the edge of the paper, gently push the strings from below the wrist. Your paper hand model should curl up like a real hand. Okay? So this is one thing. Now, you can do a little tweak to this. I was telling hypothesis and theory. What? So what are the variables over here? So that's why I introduced a variable over there. What, are, what can you do? Can you construct this hand model? so that it can hold a weight now. Now, this has no weight at all. It's just closing and opening. But so how will I construct this hand model to hold a weight? So why don't you try that? So that is where your hypothesis or your theory comes there. So this is what is curiosity. That's why I said curiosity. Albert Einstein always a curiosity that there's never end to it. So this is your curious. Why is this? Can I do something like this? So you should start thinking in that time. Then what happens if you change the position of these straws? Suppose they are, there are some straws of certain length, some according to your hand. If I change the positions, what will happen? So accordingly, say you can imagine all the strings in it like, a, like the tendons over there. And when you're closing and opening, what happens? There are no muscles actually in, this, in, your, in your hand. The muscles are, it, it is the entire body, the tendons, keep uh, doing all the work, but in the hand, the muscles do the work over here. So that, so if I change the position of the straws, what will happen? Okay, so this is one thinking question over here. What will happen in it? So you have to try, unless you try this, that's why I showed you stepwise, you can try this and see what happens. Similar one, I have something on the Archimedes spoon. So these are all things that are there at your home. Okay, you, all you need is an aluminum foil, 
a bucket or a tub or whatever it is, and you need some marbles over here. Okay, so seeing the oil bowl. So what happens? He has given the instruction and folding the edges, making it into a board, what and adding the marbles of similar weight. They should be of one condition is they should be of similar weight. And you should what will happen up? See, when will a boat sink after a certain weight is added, isn't it? So when the boat will sink in. So you could measure the weight of each object you are adding. So you can measure the marble weight and then do it. So if it is going to completely sink, try again, again you can do it. So there are various ways in which you can think about it using any of the parameters. What if I had, instead of marble, suppose if I added some stones of the same weight, I had nice glossy stones and pebbles like thing we have, all are of the same weight, why don't you do it? So what will happen in that case? Or alter the object which you are putting as a weight, then what happens? So this why, what, when question, you have to go on. That is what is the hypothesis or the theory. So that is your present. You are trying to think and frame, a, you are framing the question and getting into trial and error, experimenting it and finally concluding it. So what happens if you use liquid other than water? What happens? Can anybody give me in the chat box? What will happen if, uh, if, uh, if, if instead of water, some other liquid was used? Say oil or something like that. What will happen? Can anybody give me in the chat box? Let me open the chat box. What will happen if I give some other? Just think. I tell me now. There is no answer that is right and no answer that is wrong. It is all experiment. So when you have to experiment and experience it. So just now think. Now we can't experiment. At least we can think. Is it will most likely do the same as water? Uh, what will do? Which liquid? Instead of water, which liquid did you want? Uh, Sai Charan Trangineni. Which liquid would you think? Uh, most liquids. Okay, which liquid? Give me a specific liquid. Any specific liquid. Do you think it will do the same thing? Like oil. Okay. But do you think oil also will have the same property as water? Or oil property and uh, uh, water property the same? Don't you think the density is more than Archimedes principle insists on the density of the uh, displaced uh, uh, liquid? So all this we have to think. Now if I do like this, what will happen? So I cannot do like this. So you have to do the... Uh, the a positive aspect and a negative aspect for to demonstrate your thinking, your hypothesis or your theory that I, yes, I did like this. So this is what my observation. So I went back to this. So you have to do that back and forth till you feel that you got a, a desired result. Okay. Okay, now there are some more project ideas. Okay, these are just, uh, I'm trying to tell you what it is. How does the chair temperature change during the day? Okay, so one possible uh, thinking will be the temperature is lowest at midnight and high at the noon time. Isn't it? I can think that way. Or any other aspect also, you, you can be thinking. Then what is the difference between temperature in direct sun and in the shade? Is the difference always the same? So you can also give in the chat box if you have some other hypothesis also. I would I would rather love to read all those because these are one. Let it not be my thinking process. Let it be something like you have also thought about it. What is the difference between the temperature in direct sun and is the difference always the same? Okay. So how accurate is weather prediction? Like suppose compare the accuracy of two or more TV mills. So sometimes, you know, each channel gives us one different kinds of uh, weather predictions. Come say tomorrow and there could be a difference in an hour or something like that. But now, of course, most of the time it is. But it is. So these are the thought provoking questions which you should get and do a kind of small study on it. See, when you're in the lower classes, when you start doing these studies, when you go to higher class, you will automatically start thinking 
okay this is like this if your teacher in science is teaching some any topic you will immediately get into the thought process of thinking why what when how okay four whys and w and h okay how does the weather affect human emotion so i would say that people are often sad or depressed or moody on a cloudy days than on sunny day today is actually very cloudy uh, but i am very happy today because me this is the aspect of uh, it is not the same across all the uh, people the thinking process is not the same across all. so you have to test so for the testing you prepare a small questionnaire and you you give it away and then you get the data from there make a pie chart or we can make a nice uh, day so there you can relate it to mathematics so how does how has the emotion affected you you have to do that for over a period of time maybe a 15 days or one month or whatever time time frame you decide and then make a, a data analysis of it so that gives you okay this is what so those are all interesting things books will not give you that you have thought about it in a very unique and different you should be a differentiator there so for being a differentiator you should do this kind of data analysis and uh, experiment so what are the steps in a science fair project okay fine how would you write a science fair project first you will pick the topic so this is the general procedure most of the boards or wherever you go if you give this kind of procedure it's a very systematic way of organizing your data you are organizing your thought process and your data in a very systematic way because that is very because you cannot give something that is a uh, um uh, uh, and say very disorganized and people are just grappling to see what is there in your experiment so when you give the step wise uh, um uh, uh, in this kind of a sequence it does, it will give a clarity on your thought process that is very very important having clarity in what you want to just start to the end should be in this manner pick a topic or observe or whatever you can give any name of it the topic name then you do a research research can be done on the internet you could have gone through books you could have directly gone to the fields and do it you would have gone to the factories and seen it sub in a number of ways so you have done your research on that particular question which you, on the topic which you have chosen then the hypothesis hypothesis or the theory what if this is there if this happens like this then what will happen so cause if suppose i did like this what would be the effect of that one so those are called the hypothesis then you do the experiment experiment what here it is the trial and error you keep doing many things and finally what happens you make one exhibit or a model the final task you will present it in the uh, as a model and then what is a report report is nothing but sequence of actions which you have taken in this entire process okay during the science during from the picking of the topic the research everything you are going to document it and present it and write it as a report because here in this report also you can give your data analysis what all data you used who all you approach for this what are the difficulties you face because there will be somebody who will be referring your topic isn't it so they would all they want to take it to the next level so you have already encountered these people so those can be documented so report should have everything the plus and the minus the what what you went through the good aspect and the the, the uh, difficult aspect i don't say bad aspect it is a difficult aspect so the difficulty level what was the difficulty level you faced over there all these matter and finally you have to practice your presentation that is very very important as a student even till today we all do dry runs before we start a session we all i mean you prepare so that's why i always say that if you fail to plan your planning to fail okay so you have to plan your uh, work properly and you have to talk properly the sequence the words which you use the correct uh, the, the efficacy of your presentation present uh, depends on how you have practiced also you have to be a confident speaker 
and finally see every but there are there are many times you know students will uh, think that oh i have done the experiment wonderfully but when it comes to presentation they grapple for word they don't know how to present it but their experiment might be the, it would have been one of the best but if you can't present it what is the use so that's why even their english comes a role isn't it so i mean lalita ma'am always used to tell us earlier that interdisciplinary everything has to be interdisciplinary your your english comes into play your social studies uh, and somebody questions you you should know how to tackle those questions so you should practice it in front of your teachers or your parents and then you get a feedback and feedback children one thing is feedback should don't think feedback should always be good feedback it should be a constructive criticism like if i if somebody tells you something no this doesn't this hasn't come out properly take it in this proper stride and work on it what went wrong why did i why did it happen why did they tell like that so all these are very very important when you are writing these steps in a science way because this is the final presentation you are doing all this time all everything was only in your mind and within the four walls or wherever you are doing this experiment but when you are presenting the to the fab to the audience then you have to follow the sequence of step then it would be an effective presentation isn't it otherwise it would be a just a, a kind of you are just coming and casually doing something and going no we don't we are not interested in that okay so now i just got a sample right the same thing which i got in the cells you know they are taking the leaves so life is life from cells so what did i do with my topic pick a topic i said is it so topic name is life is from cells okay uh, or you can give it like a question does life uh, is life from cells so you can word it the way to make it more attractive because somebody who sees your presentation should really uh, they should also found oh, this a student has done something let me go and see what the uh, what is it that he is trying to tell us then you write your research what all you did how you have come to this uh, and what you uh, to which books you referred to which sites you referred all that you can highlight in this research hypothesis is plant from cell uh, is life from Uh, present in cells, then you will say, "What are your expected?" Sometimes you know, oh, no, life is just cell is just a small component. So why will life be from cells? You can think like that. Okay, that was you. You have thought like that. Okay, that was your expected observation. Then what would be? Then you should also think what could be the actual observation. Observe you to start. You see cells moving in the microscope. So when you are seeing the leaf. the leaf in the microscope you could so you could see some cells moving over there just to matter cells all these you could see it moving so then you do the actual then here the trial and error the leaves are observed under the microscope i have just written very briefly but you have to elaborate and write over here i just written very brief because positivity of the cells life if i i didn't write it but the leaves are observed under the microscope and we find cells are present in the this that is my observation then then you make a model your model is showing in the microscope but when you really do uh, a big size uh, uh, experiment then you make a model okay suppose you are doing something on uh, vermicompost and you have experiments on if i add these kind of things my compost is really good so how do i do so those kinds of exhibits you will be showing then the report as i told you report is the complete Uh, from start to end, you are documenting this and writing it because everybody should know how you went through this process. And finally, there is a practice presenting. So these are the sample write-ups. This is just a sample. You can always do the same thing for the earlier experiments, which I said, Archimedes principle, or the one with the uh, hands, the straw hands, where I change the variables. If I change the variables, what would have happened? so i will write all this so if you have the sequence ready it will be easier and a very effective presentation to the audience it's not for audience it is for you it is happiness at the end of the day that i did something very well okay it's not always for audience a happiness within all us also counts counts a lot 
So now with this, I think I come to the end of the session. Uh, if you have any question and answers, now you can. The floor is open to you. Uh, how you want, uh, you can ask questions, students. Actually, I wanted to have a quiz here, ma'am, but then I said too many quizzes so that we not. Uh... Yeah. Any questions here, children? The parents or anybody, whoever has a question, can post the questions. Probably I'll just stop sharing the screen. And if anyone wanted to ask question, uh, you can raise hand so that you know we will unmute you and you can ask uh, the question. Yes. That yes. Are we Advik Raj is asking a question, ma'am. Yeah. What precautions we should take while taking while doing any experiment? What precautions we should? Yes, that's a very good question. Suppose you are doing something in the lab. Are you taking the necessary, like if it is something to do with assets, always wear your coat, your, you should have an adult beside you, you, you should have your lab instructor in, beside you. All these are very, very, because you're dealing something with assets over there. And, and if you're doing something in the environment also, all these experiments, if there's something within the home, yes, adults will be there, but always some adult supervision should be there. And precautions is don't go too dangerous where it is like, you know, do with assets and kind of going on the roads and no, don't do such thing. Initially start small and then grow big. Okay. So always have an adult supervision. And I hope I'm clear with the answer. Yes, ma'am. You are. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, any, any child who wish to ask question directly to ma'am, please raise hand or you can drop uh, your question in the chat window also. Any child? Or ma'am was telling she has been giving you a lot of uh, projects on experiments. What did you face as a difficulty in there when you were doing those experiments? You can probably share and then we can see how we will take it to the next step. So where is it something failed and I had to work on is if you can share something, the others also will get to know uh, what is the, the, the hitches you pay, the glitches, the hitches which you face and then how we can come over it. Anybody would like to share that? It could be something that is in the, in the house front. Now being pandemic, you would have definitely not gone outside. But what, what difficulty did you face? Ma'am, there is one more question that has come in the chat. Yes. This is, I think, from the parents, not from the child. Okay. The parent is asking, uh, ma'am, uh, you know, my children have a habit of asking a lot of materi material in the name of project. Okay. And uh, initially, they show a lot of excitement. They would attempt doing, you know, trying to make something, but after that, they leave it out. Okay. So yes. how is that I can guide my child in such scenario? Yeah. So what I suggest is don't mean immediately after the child uh, asks, oh, I need all these. First scrutinize and see that experiment really requires all those kind of uh, materials. And if it is really required, then you can buy. But one thing is science, and whenever you're doing experiment and whenever it's trial and error, there is bound to be wastage and there is bound to be errors happening. So we have to inculcate the cost of that also. That is one aspect because when I used to do with my son, oh, this fail, okay, all that has gone for a price. It's okay, but we learned a lot that this didn't happen because of these, these things. So it is a learning phase for us also that always we cannot be with shoestring budgets over here and say that, uh, this uh, project, I will I'll only spend so much. It cannot happen. It can happen less or it can happen more also. So it's a very difficult question to answer. I know as a parent, it is, uh, uh, it, is uh, it is difficult to say no, but then experiment and experience. I always believe that. Yes. You, unless you, exp you experience, you won't know what it is. And yes. next time you'll be a little more cautious also, isn't it? And then 
and so most of the time what happens uh, i mean i have this habit i don't throw away many of these uh, uh, things which are there in my house in a junk at one corner so all these i keep piling so sometimes i find it some i even i be spent uh, water bottles i'll make some experiment with it so where why should i buy a bottle from there i will use this so those can you can have some corner in the house or some bag in the house and just kind of oh this may be useful this looks very unique what can it can be used for it's a motorized toy they say the toy they would also use match boxes and things that some toys which have been broken so you can just put it in a bag and kind of see how you can reuse it that is one good option because i keep doing that after some time okay my child has grown and come off the day then i can just think of discarding it up. that's one best option not to throw away i mean of course it may look like a trash but from trash you can make a lot there's one the earlier there used to be one channel called backyard science all from trash and they used to do this uh, experiment so you can do that also instead of buying come something that is new and investing in that which is which is a good uh, proposition after all you know thomas alva edison yes uh, may i mean uh, wasted a hundred times before yes. he came out with the, the bulb. electric yes. bulb, bulb. <laughs> so unless he, he did that hundred times a hundred time only it succeeded so there is bound to be expenditure but the learning will be very good in the whole process the experiment and experience anybody else there is a one more question ma'am yes this is from varun uh, uh this i don't know again it's a, it looks like you know the the parent uh, parental question how do i uh, you know make children to you know make use of more of you know waste materials that we have at home uh for the uh, you know project work and for experimentation purpose and you know all that because you know children don't like to use those kind of material no but i suggest only see all innovation comes from other such kind of material then only you, this is like a prototype you know first you don't invest everything in the buying new things and doing and if it doesn't work we naturally it will pinch our wallet isn't it so you it's better to use the ones which are already existing or near matching to what we are trying to think and then get into the actual level it's always best to make a prototype and then go to the actual one so you know okay these are the things i require and so if i do this it look much in terms of looks only it will be that will be matter but it doesn't matter in terms of functioning if it is going to function the same way with the trash which i have also what is the problem over there all we really need to know the concept the principle that is involved these two are the and, and why if i did like this the hypothesis if and cause the cause effect and if and then if these are satisfied i shouldn't worry much at this age of investing in new things and making a big model no it's not at all necessary so if you want to suppose your teacher nowadays we are not making that cardboard models and charts and all that thank god we have come out of that and we are trying to do something with the best out of waste so that is the the concept so it is best to do like that and then make a better model out of it and actually people will appreciate more into this rather than spending more money and saying oh my project cost a thousand rupees and why should i invest when i have the same thing when which we can use it yeah, from the best out of the waste there is no that only the cause the science involves principles and concept if those two are understood well i don't think we really need to invest a time thank you very much ma'am i think that would be all from uh, you know q and a perspective over to okay. you ma'am to conclude yes. Yes. thank you thank you shubha ma'am it was you, really ma nice the little little experiments which you were showing the one with the seed was particularly very nice yes. two types of seeds i never knew this to myself so that's i did it ma'am we did it in a little farm which we had so we okay. uh, germinated more so that i thought wow. i would share it with the students wonderful. and then we will take it forward wonderful wonderful and the browsing sites children because browsing and constant there are a lot of sites in the internet today 
keep browsing but of course the parental guidance you can have a lot there are a lot more which you can learn and thanks to google when we were studying we never had google as in this was this is the additional advantage which you students can have but use it in the proper and effective way don't copy and do any plagiarism over there you have to have your own ideas over there and take it for you can take the idea probably but do it in your own way thank you very much shobha ma'am thank you ma'am thank you so much sir uh, for taking a very session and uh, for uh, the conducting this whole thing and thank you all dear children and parents and teachers who are present here it is indeed a wonderful session there are a lot of insights and lot of takeaways for you all so i hope the next week i will get a lot more projects from you people than what i have received it now please do share it with me ma'am yes 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 <laughs> yes sure ma'am i will yeah. definitely you know make you the resource person to get my projects <laughs> my students <laughs> projects <laughs> uh, yeah thank you all thank, thank you, you so much lalita ma'am and uh, mr subramanian for having me given this opportunity i think after a long time i'm seeing faces of lot of kids now and uh, and this is a great opportunity for me and i always used to tell even this morning i was telling lalita ma'am we need to get that wow factor for her and that is our mantra so i worked for this almost for last 10 days kind to kind of mentally preparing and then brought it to this set i have to get that wow otherwise i know lalita ma'am won't be happy <laughs> And I want, I want to make her students happy in this new education. So that thank this you. was my thank you, Shubha. Thank you very much, ma'am. Pleasure is all of us, and uh, yeah. it is really, you know, indeed a very useful session. Thank you, thank yeah, you. And I hope the kids have all got an insight into it. Yes. Bye, bye, kids. And I think you are all going to be back to school. Yeah. Wish you all good luck. Be safe. Be safe. yes. Stay safe. Yes. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.